Hey, Fragrance Fiends, how are you guys doing? Today I'm going to be doing a first impressions video on three fragrances that I recently got in a blind buy haul, as usual. And I'm going to tell you what I think about them, so stay tuned. The first one I'm going to be talking about today is this one right here, Ancre Noir à l'Extreme. Now this one has been hyped to death and I don't do an unboxing in this video for these because as you can see, they are testers. Yes, all of the fragrances I got today were testers. So this one right here has been described as a vetiver bomb, a vetiver dark inky fragrance with a touch of sweetness compared to the original Ancre Noir, which I'm also going to review today. I'm excited to see how these two differ because usually when you have something that's an original like Ancre Noir, which is the first one, Ancre Noir EDT, I believe, and you come out with a flanker called Extreme or Intense or Eau de Parfum or Parfum, a lot of the times it's just a more intense, concentrated, more darker version than the original. So let's see. I was initially going to try this one first, but since the EDT came out before this one, uh, let's hit that one up first. We'll briefly look at the presentation. It's a basically a black block right here. As you can see, you have some information at the bottom, Lalique, the concentration, etc. You have a nice little touch of detail where Lalique is actually etched into this bow wood cap with a wooden pattern. It's not real wood. At least I don't think so. But it's really nice. It's really classy. It's cheap, so let's get into it. Spray is pretty decent too. Ancre Noir is... <laughs> well... Okay, Ancre Noir, it means black ink. And I definitely see why it's, this is called black ink. This one is very similar to a fragrance that I already own. I'm gonna go behind there and get it right now. And it's a fragrance I thoroughly enjoy wearing, and it is Vetiver by Gerla. I've spoken about this fragrance many, many times on this channel because of how much I do like this fragrance. It's an amazing niche quality vetiver. It's much smoother than the, the, the Ancre Noir, but the Ancre Noir isn't exactly uh, a, a photocopy of this one. This one is much sweeter, grassier, fresher. This one is much darker and brooding. Although the vetiver note here in Ancre Noir does smell a lot like the vetiver note in Guerlain. Let's do a side by side right now and see what I get. Okay, so this one here is the Guerlain, here is the Ancre Noir EDT. Yeah, definitely not the same. This one is a vetiver Irish Spring Soap. This is definitely one I prefer over Ancre Noir. But I love Ancre Noir. I love this thing. This thing is amazing. What a high quality fragrance. I mean, if it's holding its own and it's on equal grounds as the Guerlain, that says a lot because Guerlain is notoriously an amazingly underrated niche brand. Yes, they are niche. Or at least I consider them niche. Here are the notes for the EDT. All right, guys, so let's do the Alex Trem now. Really good sprayer. Look at that. Ooh, yes. Does this have tobacco in there? Jeez. This smells like vetiver, tobacco, that same inky vibe, black inky vibe that you get from the EDT, but sweeter. I like this more than the Ancre Noir EDT as well. This is nice. This is definitely one that you want to wear on a special occasion in a cool evening setting where you're wearing maybe a, a, um, a black shirt. I'm imagining a black shirt with a black blazer on top and a black pants. No tie, because it's a, a semi-formal event. And you're wearing this, and you're just projecting this masculine boss energy. It's just, I really like it. I really like it. Let's look up the notes. Here are the notes. Man, this is definitely very vetiver heavy, but the vetiver in this one is a sweeter vetiver. It's still earthy, but it's still a sweeter vetiver. And dare I say there is maybe a, a like a sweetened tobacco, or if I'm wrong, it just like a smoky vibe to it, maybe resins. 
I'm going out on a limb here, but maybe a touch of chocolatey patchouli. Oh, I really like this one. This is really nice. I can't wait to look up the notes and just compare it to my first impression. I could be very off, so please don't judge. All in all, I really like this, and let's look at the presentation very briefly. It's the same cubic bottle as with the Anquin Mar EVT, but this one has only half of it matte, and the other half can show you the liquid inside. It's also the same cap as the original, the same forward cap with Lalique etched right into it like here. Alright, so Lalique's out of the way. The other fragrance I'm going to be giving you my first impressions on today is this one by Franck Olivier and it's Oud Fanny. I bought Oud Touch before and I had it for a very long time and I used it on and off. The Oud Rose combo in that one wasn't my favorite it's a very good fragrance very high quality it's very nice i wore it as i said a lot but i am not a big big fan of oud rose i think it's overdone it's overplayed i'm sick and tired of it it you have different and varying levels of um appeal i would say or uh, uh qualities you have uh, a very high quality oud rose combos where the oud and the rose mesh really well they're very smooth you have ones that are a bit more scratchy and synthetic Oud Touch was a very good fragrance in terms of price to quality, but again, with all Oud Rose fragrances, I find you're getting basically the same thing. There are very few exceptions. There are ones that incorporate Oud Rose with other scents. You know what I mean, the Oud Rose combos where you have Oud Rose as the main player, but then you have other things also influencing that change the Oud Rose profile. Oud Touch was not one of those. That's why I don't have it anymore. I gave it to my um, father-in-law. He loved it a lot. From the first time he smelled it, he's like, this is bomb. I'm like, all right, you got it. If you like it, you can have it. Because of how high quality Oud Touch was, I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on Oud Vani from the same house, hoping that it would be very high quality and it would smell like Oud and vanilla, which are two notes that I quite enjoy, especially vanilla. So now that we have all of that blah 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 out of the way, let's get our tester strip and start testing. If it's anything like Oud Touch, it's really strong. Oh, it's very strong. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. Ha <laughs> ha. Impressive, yo. Whoa. Okay, so if you like Oud, if you love Oud, this one, this one is really good. It's not a skanky, medicinal, funky Oud. It's a very wearable, woody Oud. But it's still Oudy. It still smells like fermented wood. And there is actually rose in there. But that vanilla with the Oud and the rose, that just changed everything up. This is what I was talking about. I would add this to the list of Oud Rose fragrances with another note in there that makes it smell amazing i might be wrong there might, might not be rose in here but and it is strong the projection on this as soon as i sprayed it and i started to wave it around i couldn't even finish my sentence and it was already hitting me in my face it smells very strong all right so here are the notes hope that wood and rose are in there so that i'm not totally off but yeah those fragrances all three of them are absolutely amazing i enjoyed them very much at least the first impressions are really really good i would suggest you buy them you can if you have the money disposable income buy them they're not very expensive i think it's like 18 to 25 dollars each you can get them on fragrance buy you can get them on fragrance net and fragrance x i got mine on fragrance buy because they had the cheapest prices at the time Thank you for watching. I'm Hannibal. This is Magnificence. Like, comment, and follow. Share if you're on Instagram. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification button if you're on YouTube. And peace.